Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Abby Schwery is a P3 at the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy and recently completed a 10-week Mayo Clinic outpatient pharmacy internship. Uh, she's interested in possible, possible ambulatory care residency or maybe something else. Uh, and what she's going to do is she's going to share more about the experience, how she got the internship. Uh, we know that these kinds of experiences are so important uh, when we're applying. So, Abby, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Well, I, I know a number of Iowa students, and I know a number that successfully matched. It's uh, My Facebook stream was just absolutely filled with uh, Iowa students that were matching for residency. Uh, but we don't really know as much about how they got there. And one of the big things is getting an internship, uh, especially maybe P2 year, P3 year. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what first got you interested in doing an internship uh, for the summer instead of maybe getting a job, uh, you know, in town or something like that? Yeah. Um, so actually, I really didn't seek the opportunity. The opportunity actually kind of presented itself to me. So um, about three summers ago, I actually visited Mayo Clinic in Rochester um, with a family member because they were receiving um, cancer treatments there. And when I was there, uh, I met a lot of pharmacists, and one of them said, this was actually before I got into pharmacy school, and they were talking a little bit about me, wanted to know where I was at at school, what I was interested in, and they actually said, oh, Mayo actually has an internship here, and if you're interested in pharmacy, this is definitely something you should seek out once you get into pharmacy school. So... Um, I actually didn't even know that was a possibility. Uh, I think a lot of students don't even realize that Mayo has this opportunity unless someone else in their school has actually gone and been a part of it. So just having that personal experience and having a pharmacist reach out to me, even when I was a pre-pharmacy student, is what led me to actually applying for this internship. Well, what you're talking about is networking, and I think networking becomes kind of a business term, and people think of it like, okay, so I put a suit on, or I, I get dressed up, and then I go network. But what you're really doing is just meeting people that are interested in what you're interested in and talking to them. How would someone take a first step towards what you did? Obviously, you you were a little bit closer to the action, but uh, what's a first step maybe, because you went from the summer, which is between your P2 and P3 year, so what would someone do, what's the timeline? Was this at the beginning of your P2 year again, or was it like in the middle? When does this, when do the applications go in? Can you walk us through that? Yeah, so um, I applied for this during my P2 year. So uh, the application, I was working on it um, November and December, and it was due, I believe, it was like end of December, middle of January, that time period. Um, it was all done online, so it required um, a letter of intent, three letters of recommendation, and all of this information was available online. If you just Google pharmacy internships, um, Mayo does show up. So that's pretty much just how I found the application. And then once I heard back, um, it had did require a phone interview. And shortly after that, I received notice via email that I was accepted. And it started after my P2 year um, the date it started was May 20th. So I did two years of pharmacy school, and then I did this internship in between my P2 and P3 summer. So it was from May 20th till July 26th. Okay, well, let's unpack a little bit of that. Uh, so first of all, a letter of intent. Uh, often students use a template, but you had personal experience uh, this letter of intent is also something you would need to do for residency. Can you tell me how you went about crafting the letter of intent? Uh, Iowa, by the way, is one of the best writing schools in the country, uh, especially at the graduate level. The MFA is the best in the country. Uh, I know that Iowa provides those kinds of services, but how did you go about crafting a letter that basically said, this is what I'm about and this is why I'm interested in this? So a lot of it was just me self 
teaching myself, I guess, because this is the first time I like wrote a letter of intent while in pharmacy school. Okay. Um, But one of the most helpful things is I attended, uh, Iowa held like a letter of intent workshop in spring semester. And, um, I brought my letter of intent there and one of the pharmacy residents at the time pretty much really like helped me along. He gave me a lot of feedback and, um, I also used a lot of like ASHP has like examples. Mm -hmm. So I didn't use their exact templates, but I kind of took their pieces and the perspectives that they were using. And I tried to incorporate that into an internship rather than for residency for this case. Okay. And usually a good letter has a story. Uh, Maybe there was some story of of the impact that um, experiences had with you. Uh, How do you put story or how do you put a narrative into something that's kind of like a CV? Like these, you know, this, this, and this is why I'm qualified. But at the same time, you're also kind of telling them about you. Uh, How do you create that narrative or what narrative did you create? So I think it was a little more helpful for me since I had this personal experience there. So that was the narrative I really stuck with. Um, I started off saying that I've had this experience um, as a patient or a family member of a patient at Mayo Clinic. And um, I was so blown away by the care that uh, my family member received. And the way that they put the patient first was mind blowing to me. And I realized that that's the type of practitioner or pharmacist that I want to be. And I pretty much just wrapped my entire letter of intent around that mission. And since that is like Mayo Clinic's main um, statement is we put the needs of every patient first. I really put that as my like starting point and I worked everything in my letter of intent and what I've been doing in pharmacy schools thus far as to how that applies to me wanting to, again, have that experience. So I said, I'm really interested in residency. I've been seeking out leadership experiences and um, networking, and it's still kind of up in the air about what I want to do, but I really do know that I want this experience of um, being able to work with some of the best pharmacists in the world and learning really how to put a patient first. Okay, and so some other people that would maybe be interested in internship would want to know, is this the only application you sent out for a job in summer? Did you uh, put out other internship applications? Uh, you know, how, What was your process for uh, figuring out if this was going to be the one, or what recommendations do you have for someone else? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I only applied for this internship, uh, so I kind of pretty put all my eggs in one. <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> yeah, so, and I think I was kind of, I kind of had a naive perspective because I hadn't met anyone that had done this internship. Um, I didn't really have any guidance. I just was like, you know, this is something I've heard about. I really want to do it. If I don't get it, like, I'll again, I'll have a backup plan. Um, there's something else that will happen or work out. But I know that a lot of the other interns that I was with, they applied to multiple different internships. So it's really common if you are seeking this experience to apply to multiple. And I actually would recommend that for someone rather than just doing the one like I did, um, (laughs) just so you have options. Okay, that was a Han Solo. Never tell me the odds. (laughs) So, no, but that's great that it it did work out. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, the letters of recommendation. as a whole, and I'm not saying everybody in pharmacy, but we tend to lean on the introvert side. So going to professors, one professor to get a recommendation is hard enough, but going to three professors as someone who's been there for, gosh, you would have only been there for maybe a, a year and a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you go about getting the recommendations, uh, kind of going through the process? Because it's always a little awkward to say, hey, did you write that letter yet? I really need it, you know? Yeah. So it was, I was definitely putting myself out there and I was kind of uncomfortable because I felt like, you know, like I had these relationships started with these professors, but again, I was only in my third semester in pharmacy school when I was asking. So it was bold. I will say that. Like I felt a little, um, 
Like I was definitely putting myself out there, but I think what really helped is I've been pretty involved in um, pharmacy organizations and I've made good relationships with some of the faculty advisors. Okay. And yeah, having those relationships really helped because they were able to speak of my abilities thus far, even though I hadn't really been in pharmacy school that long. Yeah, I don't. I think people think of organizations as meeting other people, and don't necessarily think of the connections to the to the faculty that are both mentors, alumni, things like that, uh, that really provide those recommendations. And it's as a, as someone who's had APPE students, it's so much easier. I've spent five weeks with them. Uh, we've you know kind of got this narrative. It's you know kind of easy to do but when you're P1 P2 and you're going through those years it's it's certainly tough to get it but the organization sounds like one of the best ways to do it well let's talk about this internship you get there and what happens on day 1 like what's that like so the first day was pretty much just like an orientation welcome to Mayo Clinic day so um this was the first time that all, so there's 12 interns that are there for the summer, mm -hmm. and we all come together and we meet with the main preceptor um, or internship director, pretty much. And they showed us around Mayo, um, kind of gave us a brief overview of what our roles and expectations are. And we walked around Mayo Clinic, um, the campuses, just because it is quite large. So, for example, for the outpatient interns, since that's what the experience that I had, we got to see a couple of the outpatient pharmacies that we were going to be going to later on in the 10 weeks, just to make sure, um, kind of get rid of that icebreaker. So we were introduced to all the supervisors, and um, also we were introduced, we each had to present uh, ACPE accredited um, pharmacy technician presentation. So, okay. um we got a little bit of introduction on the expect expectations of that on the first day as well, since that's what we were working on all summer. Okay. So tell me a little bit about how that 10 weeks is broken up. I'm sure there's a kind of a template, but it sounds like there's projects that need done each year that vary from year to year, but mm -hmm. the same number of people go up there and uh, then do they kind of assess your skill set? So uh, how is it, first of all, broken down those 10 weeks? So I'm going to speak again from the outpatient. So I guess I should have said this earlier. So there's four outpatient interns. Okay. And there's eight inpatient interns. Okay. So for the four outpatient interns, our 10 weeks were broken up. Um, we were going to be rotating through six outpatient clinics. So there was certain clinics we would spend two weeks at. And then a couple, there was like two clinics where we only spent a week. So every two weeks or so, I was switching from one outpatient pharmacy to a different one. Okay. And was it, was it much of a, a shift or once you kind of got the system, the system was the same across each of those farm, each of those? Yeah. So they all use the same sort of like pharmacy technology mm -hmm. if that's what I'm talking about. Um, but what the coolest part about it was is each pharmacy had a different um, drug class that they typically see or like a different type of patient clientele. So, for example, um, there's one pharmacy that sees a ton of international patients. So that was really cool because I was able to use Mayo Clinic's interpreter services a lot. And I was able to um, learn how to communicate with people from all around the world, which is definitely something that most pharmacy students don't ever get exposed to. So I really enjoyed that. Mm. So if you're talking about different groups, and I know that it's become kind of a thing to go to another country and spend like seven or eight grand <laughs> to <laughs> go to that other country. And, and I know that they're doing great work. And I know that pharmacy school is also a, a bit of a financial challenge. Um, Tell me a little bit about kind of the, the take-homes that you're now able to share with your groups. So you've gone there, you've been in this pharmacy that many people haven't been in. Uh, you're going to be in school in just uh, two or three weeks here. Uh, what are the things that you're excited to, to bring back home to Iowa City? Well, I'm really excited that I get to share my experience, and I'm hoping that 
um, other students that are now going to be incoming P2s or P1s will also seek out this in like this opportunity. I want to make sure that other pharmacy students are aware that this is even something accessible to us. And I also want to share that um, I know we always talk about how networking is so important, but I was able to meet so many really cool people, even like outside of pharmacy there. And it was just like so amazing to hear everyone's story of how they even got there. And I want to take that back that it really is important to get to know everyone, even like even if they're not a pharmacist, just being really nice and polite and asking how they even got to Mayo or their journey throughout healthcare was really cool. So I would definitely pass that on to um, all students that you don't have to just network with pharmacists. You can network with everyone. I think that's important. Okay. So uh, there's always highs and lows. Uh, what was one of the most difficult things or difficult times you had there and how did you kind of come out of it or how did it be, make you stronger? There's always like this super bad day and then it ends up being like your best day somehow. Or you might not have had a bad day. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there was definitely challenges, uh, especially cause I was putting myself in a very vulnerable environment. I didn't know any of the other interns. Okay. Uh, we were all living together. Oh, you so were. All right. Yeah, so we each had, there were six interns. There's two intern houses is what they call them. Cool. So we each had to live with each other as well. So, um, But I would say the most difficult thing there was getting adjusted at first to moving around so much. So like I said, I was only there for two weeks or even one week sometimes. Mm -hmm. It felt like I was just starting to get comfortable with the site and the people I was working with and the pharmacists I was meeting um, but I felt like once I was actually comfortable, I was like, oh my goodness, now I have to move to a new site. And I finally feel like I've established myself in my role there. Uh, but it definitely got easier. I think the first month was kind of difficult, just trying to figure out what my role was, what exactly I'm trying to get out of this experience. But once I kind of like dove right in and just was like, they know, they understand that we're learning and our role is to be the learners there. So I would just say transitioning from each pharmacy location was a little difficult, but like I said, it's kind of just getting used to it and getting in the rhythm. Okay. And then what was probably the absolute best thing that happened? Like there's this, this day that this patient or this experience, or maybe it was just the whole thing is in its entirety. But when you come back, what were you like glowing about? Like that was just awesome. So I think one of the most rewarding things for me was I was able, I like really improved my counseling skills and I felt like I was able to meet the patient where they were. I was able to like tailor my, my really fancy medical terminology into patient words. Yeah. So something that they could understand. And again, I was able to meet like people from all around the world. Like patients were there from Alaska, um, all from these foreign countries coming there to get their care. And I was able to speak with them about how important their medications are even through interpreters and learning how to use an interpreter effectively was really cool because we don't ever get any of that experience in pharmacy school. Sure. So I just love that I was able to meet so many different people from around the world and being able to be that supporter for patient education, regardless of where they were from. I always wanted the national patient counseling competition to be like a tiered thing where like the first one is kind of a straightforward counseling and then you would do like something with an interpreter or then with a difficult patient or, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like have this, you know, final four type thing going on where, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a competition like that. But when you talk about what it really means to someone uh, when they meet a pharmacist, I feel like what you're doing is you're showing these people that maybe thought you would be giving them their medicine, but then all of a sudden you're talking about their medicine. Uh, as mm -hmm. kind of a final point, can can you tell me how you're really changing the paradigm from person who gets you your bottle of pills to someone who explains why that bottle is so important and how to take it is so important? 
So one of the pharmacists that I was working with said that um, patients, when they're at the, when they're visiting with their physician, the physician tells them it's important. Like they should be taking it, why they're taking it, blah, blah, blah. So she's like, pharmacists have to come in with a new perspective, like almost like a new pair of glasses on and thinking about what can you tell the patient that they haven't already been told by their physician or any of the other healthcare protectors healthcare um, practitioners that they've been exposed to. So I really liked that she was um, kind of changing the way that I think about how I'm going to go about talking to this person about their medications. So she really highlighted, we need to make sure that we're meeting the patient where they're at. And if, for example, if their medication is okay, they need to take it three times a day, but that doesn't work for their schedule or they're telling you, oh, well, I missed my midday dose. She's like, how are you going to change the way that you are going to tell that person about the importance of adherence and the fact that if they don't take that middle day dose, that's something that it could be impacting their care. Like, how are you going to change the way that you talk to patients about that? So she really, she really emphasized that pharmacists need to be um, teaching administration and how patients are going to be able to go home and feel confident that they know how to take their medications correctly. So I really like that aspect. And I think that's kind of like the big paradigm I've changed in the way that I'm going to be speaking to patients in the future. Cool. Well, I've asked you a ton of questions. Uh, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you want to make sure uh, that people hear? I would just say that, again, I was putting myself in a very vulnerable state applying for something that I had no previous experience with. I had no one else guiding me, but I mean, I made it and I got through the 10 weeks. I learned so much. And I think that pharmacy students, again, like it's, we just need to make ourselves more vulnerable, vulnerable and put ourselves out there. Even if you are not really sure if that experience is going to be worth it or if you're even going to get in, I've really benefited from taking this leap of faith and just doing it. And I really happy I did. So that's just something I would say to all pharmacy students who are listening. Awesome. Well, Abby Schwery, thanks so much for being on the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thanks for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. And if you're interested in learning more about the interview process, go over to Amazon.com where you can check out 100 Strong Residency Interview Questions, Answers, and Rationales in print book, ebook, and audiobook.